natal astrology. That means when someone is born, you do their birth chart, and then you can predict basically the activities of their whole life. Uh, Gola means astronomy. The last session, all the topics that we covered came under Gola. Nimitta means omens. Nimitta, it comes from a, a, a Sanskrit root that means temporary. So omens show us the temporary influences or the temporary manifestations of the uh, Jyotish influences. An omen is a sign. You know, like if a black bird flies from the left side, then look out. Is that, is that considered Jyotish? Oh yeah, that's part of Jyotish. Palm reading, face reading, head reading, uh, all these things are part of uh, omens, nimitta. Like when they went out to Arka, right? They saw very bad omens. Yes, right. When Krishna and the and the, uh, the Yadu dynasty went out of Dwarka at the end of Krishna's pastimes, they saw very bad omens. Shortly afterwards, the Yadus all killed one another in a big war. Uh, they all got drunk, yeah, and killed each other. Then there's Prashna. Prashna means horror, horary astrology. That means for example, the astrology of countries, the astrology of companies, the astrology of basically uh, non-living entities. Yeah, you can also cast a chart for those. Then there's Muhurta. Muhurta means electional astrology or when do we do things? When is the best time to, you know, get married, uh, get a job? Uh, approach, <laughs> who would have been saying never, never, <laughs> uh, to approach a spiritual master, to always take initiation, always. he's saying always, always, always. <laughs> when is the best time to uh, leave everything and go to the woods and just chant, always, 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 always. <laughs> you can tell where Udav is at. And Ganita means mathematics. For example, all of these um, astrological calculations require some kind of mathematics. Actually, uh, the uh, calculations we use to interpret a chart are very simple, just arithmetic. But the calculations needed to determine sunrise and sunset at different locations, or the TTs, or any of those things are actually spherical geometry and it can get pretty hairy. So there's a whole um, area, Ganita, which is simply mathematics and mostly geometry and algebra. Besides these six Angas, there's three Skandas. Skandas are aggregation. Skanda, the word Skanda means an aggregation or collection of uh, different knowledge. So the Ganita is part of the Ganita or the, uh, the mathematics and part of Gola. Uh, astronomy and mathematics. For example, calculating um, the uh, positions of the stars and planets in the future. Uh, their movements are so regular they can be calculated decades in advance, and they'll still be exactly accurate. Uh, so uh, this would be part of Ganita, because it requires both astronomical observations and mathematical calculations to extrapolate those into the future. When we get an ephemeris, that's a product of this Ganita, Angas, or Skanda, of Jyotish. And then there's Ora, Hora, which is part of Jataka, natal astronomy, or astrology, excuse me, natal astrology, Prashna, which means uh, like fortune telling, hmm? Muhurta, or determining the best time for things, and Nimitta, or omens. And this is basically used for uh, forecasting. 
and what's going to happen or what is likely to happen in the future based on these different um, forms of prognostication. Finally, we have Sanghita. And Sanghita is comprised of Gola, astronomy, and aspects of Hora related to mundane astrology. In other words, the history of astrology, the different astrological treatises, writings, speculations, research, um, all of the, the body of knowledge and also um, histories that will help us uh, hone our astrological skills. If we look at a history of what happened at a certain time and place, then we use astrology to calculate what the aspects were for that place. We can understand how to interpret them. So history is an important part of astrological knowledge and this is all part of Sanghita. Just like Brahma's prayer to Krishna is called Brahma Sanghita. Now what does that mean? It's a collection, collection of literary works uh, by Lord Brahma to, uh, in praise of Lord Krishna. So before we looked at the meaning of Hora as one uh, twenty-fourth of the day, but the uh, astrological procedures based on the time of day or the aura are also called hora. In fact, there's even a dance called the hora. <laughs> and uh, it's also uh, a round dance, huh? going around in a circle. Very interesting. <clears throat> so also Sanghita refers to that there is a layer of astrological interpretation in many Vedic scriptures. For example, Krishna says, I am the light of the sun and the moon. Uh, and there are many, many statements in Srimad Bhagavatam about different nakshatras and the Uttarayana, you know, the, when the sun is in the south, when the sun is in the north, and so on like that. Um, many, many deep statements about cosmology in Srimad Bhagavatam. But that's another course. And we'll get into that later. Krishna says, I am time. Yeah, that's very deep. So, Jyotish is not like Western astrology. That's why we use the word Jyotish to describe it. Uh, that's why we use Graha instead of planets. That's why we use Rashi instead of signs. Uh, because Jyotish is meant to be understood in the context of theistic Vedic philosophy. It's not a material science, and its ultimate aim is to assist us in spiritual education and growth. Uh, the ultimate aim of Jyotish is to guide us to performing spiritual activities so we can get out of this material entanglement. Uh, it seems like most of the questions that Western astrology is designed to answer are material. How do I get more money? Yeah, how do I get a better wife or this or that? But this is not the real purpose of Jyotish. Jyotish means how do I arrange my life in such a way that I can perform my material duties and still attain success and self-realization? This is critical. Uh, we have to understand where our weak points are and how we can perform different spiritual activities to overcome them. Especially the chanting of the holy name, uh, Vishnu Sahasranam, will cure any material difficulty. People don't understand how powerful it is. Uh, but I cured myself from heart disease and, and had so many other good results by chanting Vishnu Sahasranam. It's designed for that. It's supposed to give material results by a spiritual process. That's the whole point of Vishnu Sahasranam. Uh, so as Jyotishis, it's our duty to advise people to utilize these Vedic remedies to overcome their material problems. Uh, people in the West are conditioned to think that, oh, my, my material problems have a material cause, and so I need to apply a material process to solve them. Uh, but no, that's not true. Actually, material problems 
come from our past impious activities. So we need pious activities to overcome them. And the most powerful pious activities is chanting the holy name of God. So it's very simple, really. Um, Jyotish, or astrological consultation, is a platform we can use to teach people about spiritual activities so that they can really solve their problems, not just create a whole other set of problems by trying to solve material, material problems with material activities. Huh? Even if a person performs activities in the mode of goodness, like giving charity, uh, digging wells, feeding people, and so on, they still have to take another body to get the results of that activity, even if it's in the heavenly planets. So what? They're still stuck in this material world, and it's still a temporary situation that has a beginning.